Hi everyone, welcome to our very first community venue learning series um, on activating community venues. Um, we're so glad to see so many of you on this call. Um, it's awesome to see just the range of different community venues that, that have joined in. I'm going to hand over to, so I'm Elle from space to go nice to meet you all. Um, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Jeremy, who's going to kick things off. Thank you, Elle. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see so many of you join us this morning for the first of these learning series. Um, now, if you want to just jump into the chat and say, hi, it's Sam from Willoughby, uh, that'll be fantastic. Um, you can also, at the bottom of your screen, turn on your camera so that we can see who is who in the zoo. Um, and yeah, it just be, you know, this is a community event, right? So we'd love to see you. Um, right. So we've got a bit of an agenda today to kick through. So I'm going to get going. So for those of you who are new to space to co we have created a community marketplace for the sharing of community spaces. And what this has meant is we've also learned a lot about how people share space and how people hire space. And, you know, um, if you actually haven't seen the platform in action, think of it as like an Airbnb style experience for sharing community uh, venues and properties. Um, so what you're going to hear today is we're going to run through some insights on booking trends. What new ways are we seeing people using venues um, in a post-COVID world? What is venue activation? How to measure it? The community activation framework, Elle's going to run us through that, which is a simple tool to help you identify activation initiatives that work for your venue, ideas and insights from other venues and what they've been doing to activate their spaces. And on that theme, today is an opportunity to hear from your centre colleagues, whether they're over in Perth, where I'm based, or in Auckland, where Elle's based. So that's a pretty broad uh, cross-section. Sometimes you'll hear from um, the governing bodies, be it any, anywhere from RSL to Link West here in Perth or the local um, community neighbourhood centres, Tasmania. Uh, you know, sometimes you hear from those states, but you don't hear necessarily holistically outside your region. So this is a great opportunity for that. Um, and we're going to share everything with you today. So you don't need to take notes, what, you know, fuss around with screenshots and that kind of thing. Everything you hear and see, you'll get, and we're recording today's session. Um, and, you know, today we'll be sharing our ideas, what we at Space Decal have learned, and also it should resonate with what you know to be true. So just to kick things off on a little bit of an icebreaker, we've got a question for you, and if you could respond in the chat, uh, this would be fantastic. So uh, what is the weirdest thing that has been left at your community centre or venue or hall. If you could just throw that in the chat and just tell us what it is. Now, I used to be a school teacher, so we can kind of wait for the awkward pauses while everyone has a think about it. What is the weirdest thing that has been left at your community centre? Um, we may, you know, send out a prize, Connie is typing, mm -hmm. for the award-winning little bit of leftover. Piece and chewing gum doesn't count. We want something, you know, a little bit more quirky than that. We did this with uh, a few of our Auckland Council venue partners the other uh, week, and we had some some very interesting items that were shared. I think the weirdest one from that session was, I think David from Grayland said that someone had sent him some bullets in the post. It wasn't really lost property, but it was certainly something that was quite weird. Um, Fair, fair amount of underwear it was also lost and found. <laughs> you know, um, just while we're waiting for these awesome things left behind, I used to be a school teacher, as I just mentioned, and uh, for 13 years I taught year seven mostly, which was the year group I was responsible for, and boy, oh, boy, was the lost property box helpful. I scored uh, things that were never claimed, you know. I got a spare lunchbox, I got a spare umbrella, I got an awesome baseball cat, a Nike one, it actually fitted my head. So no one ever claimed them. I didn't know whose they were, so I got to keep them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what have we got here? We've got lots of umbrellas get left behind. That's handy. Uh, a toolbox that has had three rolls of sticky tape handed on about a zillion things. <laughs> <laughs> tools. How good are tools, Jason? I love tools. Very handy. That's great. 
umbrellas, tools, sticky tape, Panadol, all the important things get left behind, right? Well, if you know you're thinking during the call today and you go, oh, I know what got left behind, chuck it in the chat and uh, we'll analyze these and maybe we've got some, <laughs> it doesn't sound like really cool, but we actually got some really cool tea towels made for community center venues. We might send some out for the, for the winning the winning thing that got left behind. El, I'm going to pass back to you. Want to kick us off today on, on the sure. session, please? All right. Thanks, Jay. Oh, personal and, diary. Um, and if, if you have, um, there is a little Q&A tab at the bottom, so questions. So if anything comes up while I'm speaking, just, just drop your questions in there and we'll, we'll keep monitoring them. So thank you very much. And we'll kick off with, um, with booking trends. So I'll just skip forward a few slides. So before I go into booking trends, just to kick off the topic of activation and how we define it. So we see activation as anything that basically helps people grow their communities in your local spaces. And we see uh, the outcomes of activation as being, of, of having these measurable outcomes. So these are things that you can monitor for what's going on in your spaces. So for example, increasing utilization, so increasing the amount of hours that your spaces are booked. Um, we also think it's really important to increase the diversity of your bookings. So if you um, have a, a sort of a cohort of people that book with you all the times, all the time, well, an outcome of activation can be reaching different members of the community. So people that haven't booked with you before um, or from a different demographic of the community. Um, the one that I think is most important is when you activate your space and you get more people using it, what you're actually doing is increasing the opportunities available to your community. So if you have venue facility outside inside space and someone comes along and starts doing a regular yoga session or um, a karate group in your space, that means that that is something that's now available to the people that live locally to that space that wasn't there before that means that they have an opportunity to connect with other people nearby they have maybe um, an opportunity to learn something or create something new so for me that one's the most important outcome um, but another one is also an increase in public participation in what happens in your space because ultimately the more people that you have coming in and out of your space that are engaged in what you are doing, the more likely your space is going to be sustainable and popular and it will uh, sort of take on a life of its own with the community that participate in it. Um, it's definitely easier said than done, but it's a really, really important outcome. So moving on to just a few insights from space to come, I'm not gonna drain the data here because um, we've got some other really cool stuff to talk about. But one of the things that space to co uh, has the privilege of being able to see is a heap of data across all the spaces we work with across New Zealand and Australia. And therefore we get to see this almost like umbrella view of uh, things that are happening and we can pick out some trends. So I know from the conversations I've had with the, the spaces that I work with in, in New Zealand is that probably, and, and a lot of you on this call, this might resonate with you and feel free to sort of jump in with, um, you know, emojis or, or things that um, resonate with you. But I know that the last, well, the last couple of years have been really, really tough in the community venue space. We've certainly felt it. That um, graph on the right hand side is basically the aggregated bookings data across all our New Zealand spaces. And you can just see that big, huge dip in the middle of it, particularly when we went into lockdown in, in New Zealand, which has meant that you know, there's been fatigue from dealing with all the different changes of policies and rules with the pandemic, that most venues will have experienced a loss of revenue. There's a continual turn of things changing and some things have not come back and that's still happening across the venues we work with. However, there is also lots of positive news. As you can see at the sort of far end of the graph, um, things are starting, we feel, to get back to normal. Certainly the volumes of bookings we're seeing across all the venues we work with seem to be sort of back on an upward trend, particularly in May. Um, it seems like that was the tipping point where people thought, you know what, I'm just going to start booking things again. Um, we're definitely seeing new customers coming through and our venues are experiencing sort of new customers are finding them. Um, another benefit of having a little bit of gap in bookings is that venues have had time to do other projects which is which has benefited them 
And as I said, we are definitely seeing confidence returning in bookings again and more sustainably over the next kind of six months or so. Um, so just to dive a little bit deeper into some of the, the things that we're seeing, and this data is an aggregate across our top spaces in New Zealand, but we're pretty pretty confident that it's applicable across um, many spaces that we work with. So hopefully this is um, interesting to you. But in terms of the top booking reasons by number of bookings, the number one booking reason uh, we found is actually counselling, support and therapy. So this is where people are doing one-to-one -one counselling or they're doing an AA group or um, some form of uh, supportive community uh, event that brings people together. The second one was dance and performing arts. And this is, we've seen growth in this area. So we've seen more people running dance businesses out of community venues, and these can be quite high frequency and, and very, very high revenue earners as well. Um, and then lastly, we see, uh, you know, a huge amount of kids learning or holiday programs. So that, you know, being anything from a kid's art class to a school holiday program, driving a high number of bookings. Interestingly though, when we look at booking reasons by revenue, so less by um, frequency that, but than by revenue, we actually see that although these are not uh, represented as much here in the number of bookings, they are low volume but high revenue. So we see weddings and social occasions actually driving a, a much larger chunk of revenue than they do in terms of volume, um, which is just an interesting thing to note. Um, and what we've got on this slide is just a split to show you the difference between casual hire and regular bookings. So the way we define casual hire is where people book, you know, and pay up front for a one or two or three events. Um, whereas regular hire is your users like your, you know, yoga groups, your mainly music, your karate sessions, your um, uh, AA session that happens every week. And they usually pay monthly for their bookings. And what we see in the casual hire space is that um, the, the top reasons are generally meetings and workshops. Uh, music and concerts are definitely returning and um, just an absolute um, universal is kids' birthday parties. Still by far one of the most searched for um, booking reasons that we see coming through. So one of our recommendations, which we'll get to in a second, is kids' birthday parties is still what people are wanting to do in spaces. And the more you can promote and get set up for a convenient experience for a kids' birthday party, I think that's a booking trend that can really help with activation. Um, regular hire, it's a completely different story. So again, we see counselling, support and therapy being super high up um, for those regular hire bookings. Um, we've talked about dance and performance arts, but another one is adult education. So things like University of the Third Age or um, special interest groups, um, teaching English as a foreign language, those kind of things. Um, definitely up there in terms of the most uh, popular booking reasons for regular hire. Um, it's been really difficult over the past two years to see any real trends in what's growing. Um, so the only thing really that we've been able to pull out with any accuracy is um, there's clearly a, a big difference in sort of when kids learning and holiday programs happen. So there's almost like an inverse between kids learning and holiday programs and adult education over the summer months, which probably comes as no surprise. Um, the only one that we were able to say with any confidence that we see that's growing is uh, this trend of churches looking for community venues. So we're seeing lots of church groups not wanting to have a lease on a space that they use two, three times a week, but move into partnership with a community venue and make a very long term regular booking. So they have a, a home base to go back to, but they don't have that huge overhead of costs. Um, and so that's the one that we have seen trending up. So uh, the last insight that we have is, and, and something else that we track is that spaces don't just get revenue from the actual venue hire. There are also ways that they can um, get extra revenue from ad additional items and charges. So that might be things like projector hire, tea and coffee, um, hiring out tables or a bouncy castle. And what's interesting here is that the top booking reasons that drive additional revenue alongside bookings are kids' birthday parties and music and concerts, weddings and social occasions. So again, much more of those casual one-off bigger events 
can not, they are less frequent, but they can drive up revenue because they have these um, this ability for people to sort of do add-ons. And again, with that kids party thing, we find if you make it convenient, so if you have the bouncy castle as the, just add that on to the booking, add the birthday cake, parents love, love that as a service because it just makes their life so much easier. So to sum up this just quick overview of some of the booking trends we've seen and just a little bit of, um, you know, how can you use this information? Um, regular hire is still, we see the best opportunity for any venue to basically get predictable and stable income. Because if you have a, um, a foundational group, uh, set of groups that are using your space week in, week out, that revenue is so easy to predict. So therefore, knowing that counselling, support and therapy, dance and performance art and kids learning are the things that people are wanting to do in community venues. Um, you know, how can you connect with those type of groups and make your space available to them? How can you make it um, an attractive and, and safe and welcoming place for those type of groups? And if I just step back and I think about all the bookings that I see and I deal with um, across the platform, it still blows my mind how unbelievably um, varied the services are that community venues provide. So many centres will literally play the role of school, venue, university, healthcare, art studios, churches, gyms, and so much more with all the groups and, uh, and bookings that you take, which is pretty incredible given you know, the, the low resources and um, what you have to do with the spaces that you have. So it's just that sort of like when you look at the range of things that go on in community centres and the services you provide, I think it's pretty incredible um, that, that it isn't celebrated more for, for, the, for what it gifts the community around your spaces. Um, the other insight is that, you know, what we've seen from the data is that casual hire is a great way to bring new people into your venue. So regular hire is great. But it's usually the same people week in, week out, particularly if it's a yoga group, unless it's something that has a cohort type structure. So, for example, dog training tends to have new people in uh, each term. But casual hire is a great way to bring new people in. So if you have a 50th birthday party, potentially you've got 100 new people coming into your venue who've never interacted with you before. So what can you do in your venue to make it really obvious that you are a great place to hire for whatever they might need to hire you with? So it's, you know, having business cards, having posters on the back of the toilet doors, making it super obvious that that's, that's who you are, can help grow and activate your venue. And then lastly, casual hire is definitely the most lucrative way to, to generate additional revenue through additional services. So whether it is offering, you know, a, a set of decorations to go alongside a kid's birthday party or um, projector for meetings, it really can um, be a great way to sort of just an easy way to get a little bit of extra revenue, which can be sort of, you know, up to 10, 20 percent of to overall revenue when it starts to add up over time. So that is um, just a roundup of the data. And then just as an overarching, what are we seeing across the last couple of years in terms of new booking trends? Nomadic churches I've mentioned. So we're definitely seeing more people looking for a regular space to hold church gatherings. It doesn't always have to be on Sunday morning. We're definitely seeing them, you know, sort of looking across the week and trying to find the gaps. Um, a second interesting one, and I think this is definitely a post-pandemic thing, is people wanting a space that is local to their home neighborhood where they can go and find a quiet place to work but still not return to their actual office so this is where they don't they don't or can't work from home maybe they're in a shared house or they have um, kids or there's something else that's preventing them from working from home but equally they don't want to go back to the punishing commute so they're looking for somewhere safe warm and quiet to work from locally um, so my uh, um, insight from this is if you have a, you know, a meeting room or a space that's not being used and it has a desk set up, you could even open it up to community co-working sort of one afternoon a week and bring people together. There'll be tons of freelancers and contractors that might be looking for an opportunity to meet people locally. And it's quite an easy thing to do, provided that you have reasonable Wi-Fi. Um, another big thing that we're seeing with a lot of particular councils that we work with is um, a desire to have, you know, food truck nights or markets and use the forecourt space as a way to bring the community together and get people to interact. 
um, we're certainly seeing more people using our platform as well to uh, hire out their forecourt space for food trucks um, and generate additional revenue, but also get the community around their space for that. One that's um, a little bit specific to New Zealand, and I'll be interested to hear if anyone's seeing this um, across over in Australia, is we're actually seeing new players in the community space market. So Kyanga Aura have started doing more community spaces alongside their housing development work. And these are free venues and they it's been really cool to see what they've started to be used for. So they've taken a very grassroots approach. They're, they're providing venues when there's disruption through housing build and letting the community sort of decide what happens in those spaces. So that's also been interesting to see those kind of new type of spaces pop up. Um, and then lastly, counselling has come up a lot in the trends, but we, we're just seeing more and more demand for counselling spaces. And the opportunity here is many venues we work with actually have small office spaces that are private, that no one even thinks to make available to the community, but actually they're really, really useful for particular for um, agencies like Aranga Tamriki in New Zealand, where they need a safe neutral space outside of a family home to have family meetings or counselling, those type of spaces can actually be super, super useful. Um, so that was a really, really quick roundup. Um, I'm going to hand back over to Jay to um, start a bit of discussion because we'd love to hear from you. We've got uh, you know 25 different different venues on this call from across Australia and New Zealand. Did those trends resonate with you? Is it stuff that you're seeing? So I'll hand over to Jay to um, uh, start a bit of a discussion. Oh, thank you, Al. Um, just actually had a question for you. Look at the housing uh, development spaces, mm. um, those venues that are free. Are they put in place by property developers, are they? It's a good question. So um, they tend to be spaces that are actually owned by Kainga Aura. Um, so, for example, in, in the Roskill um, new development, there's heaps and heaps of heaps of new affordable housing, social housing going up. And existing tenants and property owners in that area are very disrupted by that building work. So in Roskill, they've just left a building and it's a home and the uh, bedrooms and the lounge can all be rented out for free. Um, mm -hmm. And we've seen a lot of people using it for that community co-working. We've seen new community groups pop up because the price is no barrier to doing community groups because it's free. Um, the one that we're working with in, in Auckland Central um, CBD is a, it used to be a church, but it, the property was owned by the housing development. Um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. No, it's just it was just an interesting one because sometimes those buildings, um, they someone needs to take ownership for them at some point, and usually the property developer passes it to the council, mm -hmm. and then someone will pick it up like a community group, like the people on our call, mm -hmm. and and be responsible for its running in the future. You know, so it'll be interesting to watch that space. Um, so quick brainstorm, really. Um, and the question here is simply, what new booking trends are you seeing at your venue? Oh, people can call out, right? They unmute. On the call. Yeah. 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 If you see in the bottom of your screen, you, you've got microphone and camera, so you can turn that on at any time. Uh, however, if you want to just type in the chat, that's also good. But we would love to hear from you what you are seeing across, you know, trends at your venue either during the pandemic, post-pandemic. Um, it's super interesting for everyone to get a sense of what's going on. So church meetings and community support groups, fantastic. Anyone um, got anything else to add there? So that's sort of echoing what you were saying, Elle. Yeah, the, the church meetings, definitely a big thing that we're seeing. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's interesting sort of looking at the cross section of the things that the data is telling us. You know, sometimes for all the things we hear in the news and whatnot about the ills of society, there's a lot of great activity going on, like really healthy, the, the stuff you'd hope that you'd see in society. So that's fantastic. Um, post pandemic, we're seeing heaps more people looking for rehearsal space for festivals. That rehearsal space, right? Interesting. Actually, yeah, I, I would echo that. I think one of um, one of the biggest new trends actually we're seeing is rehearsal space, and it's it's because it's one of those things that people really can't do well from home. Um, they do need space, and and 
Connie is from Ketiara Nui, which is one of our most popular spaces in Auckland. And they do an incredible job of making um, rehearsal space affordable to people. Because um, I think that's been a problem. If you want to rehearse somewhere, you can't actually afford to spend that much money on it every single week. Um, so yeah, it, again, another sort of um, call out to the people on this call. If you have space in your venue that's underused, consider making it at a really cheap price point and, and, and promoting it as a rehearsal space. We have this with um, another space in Auckland. Uh, Auckland Table Tennis Association has a, a, a small kind of um, blank space. They charge it out for ten dollars an hour, and it, it does get used for rehearsals because it's it, you can't hold meetings in there. There's no table or anything, but um, it's a great space for that type of thing. Yeah, very interesting. Um, for those of you looking at this brainstorming tool we're using here, it's called Miro. Uh, absolutely fantastic. If you want to brainstorm with someone who's not in the same room as you, and you could it's super flexible. Um, you get uh, three free boards, not on commission or anything. Just want to share a great tool um so we've got here parent groups not um parent groups is not able to get together on school grounds huh interesting i wonder is that covid related i wonder or is that um just the rules of school <laughs> so many rules in school band practice rehearsals have a new church group on board health and well-being workshops there's a lot of common threads here wow mm -hmm. Photo shoots also, yeah, actually Incredible. both photo shoots and video shoots. So one of the pop-up spaces we work with in CPD, we actually see a lot of, um, uh, I'm going to sound old here, but young kids using community centres for filming their own music videos because they're, you know, really cool spaces and, and they can take a lot of different shots in a community venue and they're, they're affordable. Um, I can't tell you how many uh, music videos I've seen that have been shot in, in Auckland community centres. Um, so that's another cool one that people can kind of, you know, promote their spaces for photo shoots and video shoots if you've got reasonable setup and not too bad lighting. You know, it just goes to show, doesn't it, looking at the cross section here, just how important it is to have a flexible space, mm. a space that, you know, you can push all the furniture to the walls and it can be a dance practice venue. Uh, or you can bring the furniture out and can be a hackathon maker or, or a mm. space for even, you know, if you've got the floor for it, a maker space where uh, kids can come in and workshops can be run on all kinds mm. of things like um, soldering or, or whatever. So, gosh, you guys are contributors. Well done. This is fantastic. And um, I think we all collectively kind of get some, I don't know, there's just a good vibe about sort of seeing the common threads here. So mm -hmm. thank you. I'm just going to post, post the last few up. And um, Elle, we're, I'm just noticed the time we're going to have to kick on, I think. Yes, yeah. So. I'll uh, get started on the next section. But yeah, feel free to keep sharing these. And we will be sending all the notes out. So um, yeah, don't feel you have to jot things down. Um, cool. All right. I'm going to swap back to the presentation. So um Jay, I think if you stop sharing, it should just pop back up. That's all right. And hopefully you guys can still see the presentation. So um, oh. sorry, I'm just trying to rejig my screen. Um, so one of the, um, just to jump into the next part of our agenda. So we've talked about booking trends and now we're gonna show or, or talk to you about a framework that we've used um, with a number of venues to help you identify the things that you can do at your community venue to activate the space. Um, and we, because we work with this huge cross-section of venues, one thing we know is that the problems that you, or challenges you face are universal. So we have lots of talks around, you know, how can you balance internal programming and venue hire? There's always a, a sort of challenge around resources and funding. Um, how can you advertise with no budget or time? Um, how to continually get people engaged in, you know, becoming volunteers or custodians or part of your community trust? Um, and just to illustrate this, uh, uh, one of the things that one of the things we know in terms of the solutions is that the solutions have to be hyper local to where you are and your community and your venue because. We, we could give you 300 ideas to activate your space and in the resource pack, you are going to find, you know, lots and lots of ideas for, for how to do that. However, because the community you serve is very unique to your specific area, you need to be um, 
the, the stuff that you come up with will, will need to be sort of special and unique to you. And to illustrate this, I was in Perth a few weeks ago and visited three community spaces, some of which I think are on this call, so hello. Um, and they're all 20 minutes apart, but they're so different in the way that they serve their communities. So Willoughby, um, which uh, has uh, a, a a wonderful community garden space and does lots and lots of programming. Uh, they have a big badminton hall, so they're sort of more focused on that type of thing. Whereas just down the road in Hillview, their real purpose is serving um, the ethnic diversity of their community around them. And they have this incredible setup for celebrating multiculturalism. And then just 20 minutes down the road, Wembley is a completely different area, which has you know a much higher um, retirement age population and also young families so what they do to activate some space is different so that's just to sort of um introduce this idea that we're not going to give you you know 200 ideas but what we are going to do is give you a framework that helps you identify the right things for your spaces so what we've got this is called the community venue activation framework and all this details in, in the resource pack that we're going to send out but if you think about this metaphor of a hot air balloon and activation being just like a hot air balloon, we have um, what we call activation lifters, which are seven categories of things that you can do that help lift and bring people into your space. And then we have this idea of droppers, which are like sandbags that can um, hinder activating your space and they can place barriers in front of people finding and booking and using and growing what they're doing in your spaces. And then holding it all together and making sure it's really, really um, uh, unique to you is always bringing it back to your purpose and the pillars. So what, what is it you do? Why do you do it? And what do you stand for? Um, or to sum up what the venue wants to achieve for your community. So I'm just going to go through these in a little bit more detail and then we'll do some more, um, more brainstorming around some of the ideas for this. Um, but generally speaking, when you've the idea behind this hot air balloon metaphor is that when you've got lift off at your venue, the activation becomes effortless because the people coming in provide the fuel and keep things um, keep things going and keep bringing new ideas and new activations and activity. So the more we can kind of create this sort of self propelling uh, flywheel of activity, the easier it becomes over time. Um, so just to dive into um, some of those uh, seven different activation lifters and to give you a few examples of these to get you thinking about what, what it could be for um, for your spaces. Uh, so marketing and awareness. So this is, uh, you know, the more people that uh, can find and book with you that know that your space exists, uh, that it's easy to find you. Uh, therefore, the more people hopefully you'll get inquiring and, and going on to book. So a couple of ideas in this space are, you know, have you looked at your signage recently? If you're in a really prominent position, does it say venue hire really, really clearly ev everywhere? You know, are you in a park where there's dog walkers going past all the time? Can they can they see and know what you do? Does it feel welcoming? Um, and then, of course, things like social media and how active are you on social media? Um, regular hires, we talked a little bit about before, but regular hires are such a great uh, way to sort of build a, a really firm community around your space because they come in week after week after week. They can bring new people and they're almost sort of, you know, part of your family in your space. Um, and there are lots of ways that you can promote yourself as a regular hire place. So um, do you do slightly discounted rates if someone's going to book long term with you? It can sometimes take a while to establish a new community group in a space. Sometimes it can take a while to work out the right time slot to get enough people. They need to market themselves to get people in. So can you offer a discount for the first six weeks um, or something like that? Casual bookings. Uh, so those one off things for us we can't you can't go far wrong with kids birthday parties and packages that just seems to be such a huge reason why people want to use community venues um again it comes back to a little bit tied in with marketing but how can you promote your space uh, for the particular casual bookings that you want to get or don't want to get as well so make being very clear on your proposition if something like 21st birthdays is not something that you want to do um 
programming and events. So this is where you're putting on your own classes or activities that are hosted by you. Could be concerts for the community. It could be a, a weekly uh, language learning class. It could be that community co-working that we talked about. It could even be a family fun day. So far sounds gigs, which are great for getting people in as one-off events. Um, these are all ideas about how you can bring people in and promote what's going on. Um, the, uh, the next one is community engagement. And this is actually one that I see as one of the sort of least loved activation lifters, but it's such a, a good way for you to build the community into what you're doing. So um, one of the ideas we have around community engagement is, do you have a panel of people in your community that you can share ideas with and get feedback? People that maybe come and meet every two months and that you can say, hey, we're thinking about doing this program. We'd love your feedback on this. We're looking at getting a mural. Can you give us your updates or, or feedback? A, a community panel of engaged people can be a really nice way to make sure you're getting that feedback from the people that you want to attract. Um, strategic relationships is another important activation lifter. So this is where you potentially might have a, a relationship with a local space. So for example, a school or a university, if you have good relationships um, with local businesses that can provide funding or sponsorship, if you need to do projects and things like that. Um, do you have reciprocal board members? So if you are linked with a school, do you, do you have someone on your board on the PTA and vice versa? It could be a great way to build those relationships and really help you with funding, sharing the word of what you do. Um, they can be really important. And if you don't feel like you have enough strategic relationships, that's a great place to start in terms of, you know, building that kind of network that can support your growth. And lastly, placemaking. Um, and this is something we're really passionate about because the way uh, placemaking, what placemaking means to us at Space to Co is making your venues as welcoming to the community as they can be. So how welcoming does your space look? Does it feel like it's a home away from home from people? Um, how can you bring the history of the particular place you're in into the space? So we've seen some beautiful things in spaces like photo history projects where you get the local community to come and you know have a big notice board and share like what are your memories of this space? And these are all just ideas from hundreds of ideas that you can use to sort of grow what's going on in your space. On the flip side, we have activation droppers. And these are things that are also worth taking a good look at and saying, OK, how can I um, look at what might stop people coming into my space? Um, so a big one that uh, in, in particular at Space Co, we're really passionate about is inefficient processes. So. Um, I know some of you uh, on the call are, are with Space to Co and, and we have sort of online booking software that can improve this. But if there's heaps of forms and multiple steps and you're not able to get back to people in a timely manner, they will be going elsewhere. And that can can be a blocker into activating your space. Um, second category is unloved venue. So this is where it might not be that your venue is particularly tired, but it may be that there's a service your community needs that you don't provide. So, for example, Wi-Fi, are people always not booking with you because there's no internet connection or because you don't have a projector in that room? Can you look at getting a, a local board grant to get that projector so that it can it can be that extra thing that sort of gets a few more people into the space? Um, lack of resources or, ca or cash can be um, you know, an obvious one. Uh, if you don't have um, heaps of cash lying around to do some of these projects that can help activate, be it you know, getting a projector or other things. Um, that can also be a barrier to growing what you're doing. And lastly, dysfunctional teams. So, you know, if you're struggling to get volunteers in, if there's high attrition in your team, if there's lots of um, internal politics, this just means that people's minds are elsewhere. It's not on growing the space. It's not on connecting with the community. It's on sort of dealing with those things. So is that something you need to look at as part of your activation strategy? And then lastly, as part of our hot air balloon metaphor, it's just this idea of whatever ideas you come back to, always make sure that you can test them against your purpose and your pillars. And I've put up a couple of examples. I know um, Connie's on the call from Ketia Anui, um, where these spaces have super, super clear purposes and pillars. And everything, it's really, really clear what it is that they're trying to achieve within their community. And if you have this clarity of your mission, then you know all these ideas that um, you're coming up with, you can 
test them against this and make sure that you're prioritizing the ones that are really going to make a difference. So, for example, the idea of projector might be absolutely useless for your particular purpose and pillars. Um, but if you're trying, if your purpose is to serve the local business community, then it probably might be a good idea. So just to give that an example. And if you don't feel like you have a clear purpose and pillars, that's OK. In the resource pack that we're going to send out, we've got a really fun exercise that will help you sort of uh, zoom in on what you think yours might be. Um, so I'll hand back to Jay um, for our last uh, group activity or discussion, just to come up with a few ideas around some of these um, activation um, categories. Wonderful. Thank you, Elle. Um, fantastic as always. And um, gee, I, I just love you know, seeing that kind of metaphor, I guess, of the hot air balloon. I think it will resonate with a lot of people on the call. Um, so just to wrap, this is our previous brainstorm. Now we're going to move over here to our activation idea brainstorm. So same as before, if you've got any particular things that have worked for you um, that you think others might benefit from, then um, throw them in. And uh, we'll, you know, a rising tide lifts all ships. We often say that uh, line and it certainly applies here to all of you. Um, just while you're thinking, though, uh, Elle mentioned so far sounds. So I'll just maybe define so far sounds. So if you've not heard of them, um, they stand stands for songs from a room. And the concept of so far sounds is they organise pop up music gigs, live music gigs, usually acoustic, unplugged, um, in uh, secret locations, and often in unexpected, um, quite unexpected places actually. And sometimes a room that we see um, at a community venue is surprisingly unexpected. And so they're in about 400 cities around the world, um, probably one of the biggest things you've never possibly never heard of. Um, and, you know, they're always looking for places to host events. And there's a really, really nice, and this is an activation concept in itself, when you get more people coming through your facility they kind of discover your facility and they may walk past the notice board and see some of the amazing programs that you're running. They may discover, oh, there's a thing happening here on, you know, robotics for kids. That's, um, that's going to be awesome for my 10-year-old. Or they might kind of see the venue that you've got and go, oh, my gosh, we have finally found a place where we can have grandma's 80th birthday party because we don't have the space at home, but this would be perfect. There's wheelchair access. It's kind of thought of everything. And so through the association with something like a sofa sounds of bringing more people through, you kind of get to activate in the process. Um, I'll come to these ones that have been written, so please keep them coming um, uh, shortly. And I'll just give you one other example, Elle, as talked about a lift of being placemaking initiatives. Mm -hmm. And... Placemaking is such a wonderful way to basically completely change how the community sees you and um, especially when it's been done from the community grassroots level uh, rather than necessarily from a top-down level. So engaging community groups who are passionate about placemaking is an absolute no-brainer. So one of our favourite placemaking uh, organisations in Australia is the Town Team Movement. And what I'm going to do here is in the chat, I'm just going to share with you a link. Uh, and now you may like to take note of this for the other resources. It's a whole bunch of free placemaking ideas and resources from the Town Team Movement. And um, what the Town Team Movement is, is they basically are, you know, community groups getting together and saying, hey, let's put, let's get together, work with our local council and let's make our space more vibrant. Let's activate it. And... Um, it's because it's kind of coming from that grassroots level. It's just, it's it's really growing. And um, they've got over 100 town teams now and, and growing strongly. So they're, they're a fantastic group. Um, we, we sort of um, have a, you know, a collaborative partnership with them. Just um, we're mates, basically. And uh, I recommend you get some good material from them. All right. So what have we got here uh, for ideas? Let's go back to the top here. So um, I'm just going to copy and paste. Then we can talk talk them through. No, tell me if I'm just yabbering too much, and we need to pull it back on time. No, we've got we've got enough time, Jay. So yeah, definitely enough time to sort of explore some of these ideas. Um, awesome. 
And that, so we do have some placemaking resources in the resource pack that we're sending out. Um, there's a group called Placemaking Aotearoa, and they have some free packs to help you sort of explore opportunities. One of like, it's a real simple idea, but especially during the summer months mm -hmm. is thinking about things like if you have outside space, just putting some bean bags out there um, and making it a place that people can come and chill in their lunch hour and then have a big old poster behind it that says, you know, venue for hire or, you know, concert on Friday. It's just a way to get new people to engage with your space. Um, and it can be quite a, a simple thing to do. Um, I loved, um, I think Rhonda shared the idea of car parking for local shows and events. That's brilliant. You know, if, you're, if your uh, car park space is not being used at those sort of big local things, then yeah, what a, what a great way to, to get people to um, use something that already exists um, and, and engage. That's, that's a fantastic idea. Connie, that's really interesting that you're looking into programming in your own right. Um, so that's something that uh, we hope to plug into the space to go platform in the very near future is uh, ways in which we can add value around programming and uh, ticketing and organising logistics around some of those types mm -hmm. of things. So that's, that's really cool. Uh, and we may kind of be in touch, actually, <laughs> to learn mm -hmm. more from you about what you would love to see, what your wish list is. And that goes for anybody on the call today, really. Um, okay, so this is a great list. So I'll just start from um, where I, the first idea that came in was Swap Shop worked really well for us. Get tokens for dropping off clothes and use them to get clothes that others drop off. Aha, uh -huh. so you give some, you get some. That's really nice. And that would absolutely attract um, people in. That's really cool. And, you know, as opposed to an op shop where you kind of drop stuff off for free, then you've got to pay for the stuff you take. That's really cool. That's that's fantastic, actually. It truly is a circular economy in action. Um, as well as doing history photo projects, I found a lot of people also get really lit up learning about uh, the unique ecological um, nature of our area, the Wai Haratui River that runs under Queen Street, really grows a sense of care of place. I did not Beautiful. know there was a river under Queen Street, Lucy, so that's news to me. That's really cool. Yeah, isn't that interesting? You know, um, and history tells us so much and can really inspire people with a degree of awe and wonder, and your place mm -hmm. and space might have that. We've got the St Luke's Church in Auckland, which absolutely has a rich history behind it. Um, as, you know, even if your buildings are you know, particularly historical or have these kinds of interests, you can extend that into tours as well, mm -hmm. even potentially. Car parking for local shows and events we've spoken about. We're going to look into programming we've spoken about. Special needs school classes away from traditional school, more relaxing for students. Wow, gosh, is that not needed? Boy, oh, boy. Um, you know, that schooling. Go ahead, Elle. I was just going to say that's a really interesting point because we did um we we uh, created a video recently about this idea that local community venues are effectively schools. You know they are education centres for people. Who, you know after we leave school, university, where is it we go for the for our education? You know whether it's to learn a, a dance or to you know do improv theatre or you know a, a space that is. Yeah, maybe more welcoming than a traditional school, which often puts the gates up at 3 p.m. and chucks people out. Well, community centres are the space that we go to learn these days. And, um, yeah, isn't it amazing that they are basically centres of education um, for the local community? You know, it drives me absolutely crazy um, as a former teacher looking at the system um, and the fact that it's got a giant... Most schools these days have a giant fence around them they pretty much say go away um, and they almost turn into the opposite of what they're intended to be. And I know it's a really critical view of schools, but we're seeing the workplace disrupted at the minute. Um, we've certainly seen uh, retail disrupted massively over the last decade. Education will be disrupted as well and organisations that will fill the gaps of need will, will be centres, I think, will have a big role to play in democratising what education of the future looks like. Uh, homeschooling is on the rise for a reason. You can learn so much information online these days. Um, obviously, not everything, and you know the people skills are, are the the skill of the of the twenty first century. But boy, oh boy, uh, what an opportunity for anyone in the community centre space it is. 
Um, I know sorry, he's, um, the idea of a um, weekly drop-in cafe from Amy, um, and that's actually something a few spaces have talked about that I've um, been in contact recently, which is uh, actually making it really obvious to people that you know you're doing something that's welcoming back into your space because if you have experienced a drop in bookings or you know particularly regular hires that haven't come back doing um a really lovely welcoming event to say hey you know we're back open we're here when you need us and helping people feel really safe to do that um because that there's as much as you know I've said you know we've seen a, a big spike in May across all bookings there certainly are people that that still don't feel comfortable to be to be back out there so yeah ha having an event that's sort of helping make people feel safe and welcome back um is a, is a really good idea I love the I love um I love the uh, Connie you've gone here and just you know thumbs up the idea here um from uh, Amy that fundraisers, fundraisers for local community cause tied into a known event. Very cool. Thank you for that. Um, we've got weekly drop-in cafe, host COVID connector, free coffee and cookies has attracted people who have moved into the area during COVID and are isolated, also retirees. Mm -hmm. That kind of gets me thinking about this concept that um, when you're sharing spaces and places, um, some, you know, Sometimes areas or suburbs or local councils have a, a, a bit of a mindset, this is us, this is ours, and this is the boundary. Or sometimes there are people in need that just sit across the boundary, and if you're close to the boundary, you can attract people from, you know, outside your catchment area but who are also local, who can walk to your to your place. So absolutely, um, you know, thinking about getting rid of the, of the, of the boundaries in that way. Free self-defense class for ladies, classes for ladies, fantastic. Social media has worked when reactivating space. Post, post COVID or government used for six months, gained a number of casual bookings straight away, huh? I'd like to know more about that one actually, about the social media, because from Sandra actually, because social media, right, it's complex. Social media can be very tricky to nail. And, you know, sometimes, people get sucked into the cost of spending on paid ads and that's not actually, it's never been more expensive than it is right now. So if you've got any concept, I oh, thank you, you're typing any colour around that, that'll be really good. Or maybe you've got someone in your team who's a bit of an expert on that space. Uh, social yeah. media can be daunting for some people that haven't grown up with social media. So but it's absolutely an amazing way to connect community. One thing wow. I'd, um, I'd recommend in this one, um, in in the social media space, is the um, I suppose the the biggest thing that community spaces have going for them is the amount of user generated content that they have a access to. So for everyone that's using their space, encouraging them to take a picture, tag. Um, tag your center basically means that you're getting a lot of activity that's that's you know making your center feel active and bustling and promoting your center for free without having to do anything really. Um, so the more you can do to sort of you know have a you can have a social media wall in your foyer, tag us if you you know uh, uh, tag yourself on Instagram and offer a monthly prize. Uh, remind people when they book with you that you know please um, share what you're doing and we'll feature it on our page. Uh, do you want us to promote what you're doing in you know in our pages there's so much content that your users can create for you so sandra you've written here just a post on council's facebook page letting the community know that the space oh, was again available brilliant. for bookings you sound so humble about that but you know the fact is you reached out to council um mm -hmm. and you know whether you got them to post on your behalf or you got them to share your post or uh whatever, whatever however you went about it you that, that idea in itself that you can do that um, might be something that others can go, oh, gosh, I never thought of kind of going, you know, hitching yeah. a ride. <laughs> so. Yes, suit that. That's an awesome idea, Sandra, because there are big groups that people watch without even thinking about it. And council pages are one, local community networking groups um, are another one. So if there are groups that have big audiences that might be interested in the spaces that you have, just posting on those can be a real, real good hack. Oh, wow, look at this one. Information evenings about events or a specific concept, e.g. what happens when someone dies or what to know about planning a wedding. Huh. That's, um, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. 
certainly when we're looking at topical trends at the minute, you know, everyone talking about the great resignation, the future of work, some of these sort of big themes that people want to engage in the discussion about. I'm going to need a bigger board. <laughs> yeah, we'll, um, we'll pull all these together. Um, so I'm going to let you take over because we're just about running yeah, out of time. Yeah, exactly. right? I will just call out um, um, boomerang bags because that's come up before and I, I love this idea, which is um, that it's, uh, particularly if it's of the boomerang bags I'm thinking of, it's upcycling materials and distributing them to people to sort of do fun projects together. Um, yeah, so such an awesome idea. Um, so I'm going to, um, we're just going to wrap things up because we're at the top of the hour. Um, so if I just pop back to uh, the slide deck just to sort of share what we're going to share with you. So hopefully I can make this the center again. Um, so it, it, hopefully you've got a lot out of this. We certainly have. And thank you so much for everyone for sharing your ideas. It really like one idea that you share might generate something really cool in another space. So just thank you for being so generous with that. Um, the hot air balloon idea that we shared with you, there's in the resource pack that we're going to give you, there's uh, four different activities that you can run with your community board, with your management team, with your community panel, whoever, um, to uh, help you use that in a way that's going to be really helpful for your spaces. Um, we are also going to share all the ideas that you've come up with today. And we've got another set of resources of just, you know, uh, organisations we think are really doing cool stuff in this area. So there's a really awesome one here, which is from a community halls in Yorkshire Trust, which is 52 painless ideas to bring the community together. And there are some gold ideas in there, which is awesome. Um, and some of the Tanti movement that Jay shared. Um, and then lastly, we're gonna do one of these every month and we'd love to know what our next topic should be. So we're just gonna pop up a quick poll and we'd love to hear from you. So I'm just gonna publish this now. Um, and hopefully this is going to work because I've never actually done the poll thing before. Um, has that worked, Jay? Can you see a poll? Not yet. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go add a poll. Hmm. Uh, if you if maybe <laughs> I can't make the poll work. Um, are you sure you can't you see stop, it? it? Just, no, we can't. Just stop sharing your screen, see if that helps. Okay. Oh, hang on. Um, oh, hang on. Hold up, hold up. So just under your, um, where the chat is, you'll yeah. see there's a poll. you got to click on it. Yeah, click on it and then it'll yeah. pop up and you can submit a vote. So um, either have a look at that poll and tell us which of those ideas you'd like to hear from in our next topic, or please just throw ideas at the chat, we'll take anything. Um, and then we'll take the most popular one and um, we'll send you a, a link to register for the next session. If you think other community venues that you know are in your network would, would benefit from being involved in these, then please invite them along. We'd love to get this to be a really beautiful community of people that, that are running community spaces and, and doing so much awesome stuff. So um, yeah, please tell us your ideas and your feedback. And we'd love to hear from you what what we should cover next time but other than that i think we're pretty much at the end if there's any other questions or comments then we're happy to um I'll, I'll ju I'll just to jump in there we've got 14 votes on the poll so far so that's um just like half. So if you could could click on the poll which is just under the chat in the middle there's a little icon with a like a clock face that says polls just click mm -hmm. on that and you will open the poll up and i'll just read the questions um so hacks for creating content for posters, social media, and promoting things at your venues, the top one at the minute, uh, most voted. New ideas to create revenue at your venue is next. How to make pro uh, booking processes more efficient is next. Place making ideas for community venues, followed by something else. Uh, so with 16 votes, they're coming in. Uh, we'll just stay around for another couple of extra minutes. If anyone wants to do the poll, that'd be really good. Um, but yeah, it's been super having this chat with you all today. Uh, if anyone's got any other things they want to chat about, please throw the questions in the chat. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the 13th of July. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, look at the love, Elle. Oh, awesome. All right. I will um, <laughs> just let people kind of uh, just check if there's any other questions or comments, and then we'll, um, we'll end the event so that the um, recording can go out. 
So many cool ideas, though. Blown away. Absolutely. 17 votes. So we've got nearly everyone. It's I game can't. on now, Al. We're going to have to make something really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll have to. Um, the, the, um, for, for our hacks, we, we, we have a, a marketing course which will get sent out. So that's um, there's some content. There's some good stuff already for that one. Oh, thanks, Connie. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to end the event now. So um, thank you very much, everyone, and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks, everyone.